Hi, welcome to Monterey's Cooking. I'm John Pisto, and this is my good friend, Joe Shabika. We're in Modesto, California, and in front of me, folks, this is what they are, olives. Nick is world famous for making California olive oils. He's one of the last of the original producers of olive oil in, Calif in the United States, in fact. Joe, your family's been doing this now since, what, 1936? Wow. It's 60th year. And uh, we have a label that's called Marsala, and it's been on the market since 1936. How, old, how old are you, Joe? Well, I was born in 1915. Okay, so that makes so you... So that makes me, I guess, 80 years old, 40 years in each leg. When I came here, he was coming down these la this ladder. I tell you, he's fast, too. <laughs> I've done a lot of harvesting. I, I, bet, me. I bet you have. Yeah. <laughs> I've been around a long time. We like to go inside and we're going to show you how olive oil is made. And then maybe we're going to try a few recipes using a lot of olive oil. Now, you know, the olive oil I use on my program, I always give Joe plugs. And this is That's where right. we're going to see where it's actually made now. Okay, it's a real treat being here. Thank you. Okay, as you can see, the olives start here. They go up, they get washed, and then they get crushed. Then they get mixed up and they go to the press inside. But this is where it all starts. A little noisy. Fantastic. The smell here is incredible. The beautiful olive oil smell. Just terrific. Mrs. Shabika has cooked us an incredible dinner. I feel like I'm in my mom's home. <laughs> really, it looks the same. <laughs> Everything, the, the food is so similar. And, you know, Nick is, is very, very happy to share this wine with us. He made it himself. It's, got, it's a secret recipe. He tells me if I drink this, I'll live to be 100. So, you know, I want to take two bottles. That one. <laughs> but I'm going to taste. I want to pour it, and I want to do a, a nice salute to everybody. And thank you for having us here. And the gentlemen, that, those beautiful cars that we have outside, and all the family, and the little granddaughter, and Mrs. Shabika for cooking this beautiful meal for us and for everybody, okay? Shantani, good health to everybody. Yeah, thank you. Boy, wasn't it fun going to Shabika's? I tell you, that Joe is really a character. His wife's a very nice cook. You know, which olives have become a passion with me, like mushrooms, as you can tell. <laughs> I, I get into these things, and I have to know all about them, and I investigate them, and I did some investigating. In California, in the United States, olives to most Americans mean the black olives that we have during holidays or uh, that we put into tuna sandwiches. And it's a bland, uh, rather tasteless type of an olive. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just very, very, um, it doesn't have the kind of flavors that I go for. I mean, they've got to be, you know, robust. They've got to have some authority to it. I had, um, somebody told me about a shop uh, up in the Bay Area, and I called them and I said, I understand you have olives from all over the world. I says, can you send me a selection? So this is, if you look down here, you'll see some of the olives I, I've got. Uh, you know, our trips through Europe and through Greece, Corsica, everyone has their own style of, uh, styles of olives. Uh, I'll bet you the olives can be, are probably prepared thousands and thousands of ways. I mean, literally. These are coming straight from the large containers, okay? From here, you do other things to them besides using them for cooking. Um, you mix them with the oil, you put garlic to it, you put chili paste to it, and you make a whole different thing. This is we saw in North Africa. I mean, let's, let's go through some of these olives. Now look at, the, look at these beautiful shapes of these guys. Okay, these, this is a French olive. It's called a, a, a la cure. Okay, very, very good. I taste that. Mmm. Sweet. This is a light yard. Very buttery. When you're talking about olives, this is real buttery flavor. They talk in terms of sweetness, buttery, oily, rich, salty. Okay. These have been cured with. If I eat all these, I'm going to be full by, so I, I have tasted them. I've, I've had them here for about four days, not here, but in the refrigerator. So I've been tasting them uh, over the course of the last uh, few days. 
And believe me, we also have ones here made in California in Monterey by our friend Ronnie Aliotti. He's right up there. These are world class. Good job, Ronnie. But some of these you'll recognize as the Kalamata olives from Greece. These are um, the, uh, the Picholine that's from here. These are delicious. You can't stop eating these. Once you, once you start, they're like candy. Uh, look at the French oil cured. That's the same style. You know, these are done very, very interesting the way these are done. You mix them with rock salt, and if you ever tasted a olive picked from a tree, don't do it. Well, maybe you should do it just to see what it's like. You'll have a puckered lip <laughs> for the whole day because of the acid in the olive will just pucker you up. And what you have to do is you have to get rid of that tannic acid, and there's various means. With these olives, what they've done is they mix them with salt, and the salt will leach the liquid out and they hang it. The best way is to hang them in a bag and you let all that tannic acid drip off, okay? Then they're put in boiling water for a short period of time and then they're put outside to dry and then they're hand rubbed with olive oil. You see why they're so shiny? And what it's done, it's taken maybe 75, 80% of that real strong bitter taste out. So, but you want to have a little bit of that flavor in there. That's what gives it the delicious flavor. Uh, Okay, the peach Ronnie's are delicious. Oh, they're all good. I can't say there's a bad olive here. Look at the size of these guys. Aren't they something? Look at these. These are from Italy. These are good. They use these for, uh, these are cured with lye also. Cook with them. You can use them. We're going to use them in a very interesting way in a minute. Oh, these are come from Spain. All right, look at this. This is, this is uh, fennel. Okay, it looks like it's wild fennel. All right, the stuff you see growing along the side of the roads here, that's what's, that came packed that way. Um, there's one here that's very, very interesting called the Neon that's from France. This olive has been produced the same way and it's recorded for over 2,000 years. Okay, this is considered, this one right here, this one is considered the Cadillac or the Rolls Royce of the olives. Okay, this is considered one of the best, and I've got to taste another one. Mmm. This has so much flavor to it. Okay, once you get used to these kind of olives, you'll never go back to those other ones. They have a lot of flavor. I got, what I did was call my suppliers and I asked them for all the unusual, unusual oh, here's another interesting pack here. This comes out of France now. Look, at, these are all packed differently. These are green olives and the escabeche sauce. Escabeche being um, a little tomato, a lot of garlic, a little hot pepper. But here's another style uh, in an onion sauce. Okay, here's another olive. This is mixed. Okay, they call it cocktail assortment. You know, it's it's not, uh, it's very popular in France and in Italy. Before, you, when you sit down, you have cocktails that you have a little dish of olives in front of you. Now, you know, in Spain, you've heard of tapas bars. T-A-P-A-S, tapas, not topless. <laughs> um, and it's the Spanish law that any place that serves liquor has to serve food with it. Very good custom, very good. So olives play a big part of the Spanish culture. You know, the, the olives that you see growing around Monterey in our area, all brought over from the missionaries. Um, you know, a couple, few hundred years ago, and you know, there's three main varieties and they call one the mission and the other ones um, are, uh, were all brought over for oil and for eating, okay? Very, that's a real interesting story. All right, so this is the, the assortment. They even have some uh, lupini, or lupin, we call them. All right, they're, they're see, uh, like a bean. In here. That's very good, I tried those. And here's a dried one, and these are from Provence, south of France, mixed with, there's a garlic clove in here. I mean, they're all delicious with thyme, I tell you, Absolutely delicious. One of my suppliers gave me these. I've never tasted these before. When we come back, I'll open these and we'll taste them, okay? Let's try to open these. <laughs> and I'll go very slow. You don't wanna get stuck here. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, very interesting, folks. Very, very, look at these. Now these are from Provence. And let's give these a taste.
Mmm. I tell you, what we need right now is a nice glass of pastis or a nice glass of wine and some crunchy bread. This is, these are absolutely delicious. A lot of oil, they still got that bitterness to them. What I'm gonna make, which I thought would be real different, real fun, let me put some of these in here too, is a, a sandwich. I don't think I've ever done a sandwich before, but I wanted to do something that really makes the olive and the olive oil become very, very important. Now, if you've ever been to New Orleans, you've tasted something called a muffalata sandwich. Now, a muffalata in Italian means mitt. Now, you know, there's a lot of Sicilians, a lot of Italians in New Orleans. And in one section out of the town, they have all these old delis, all these old uh, um, Italian markets. And I tell you, you walk in there, you feel like you're in Italy. Now, muffalata is a is a mitt, right? Now, when I was a mean little guy, when I was a little boy, my mother would say, come over here, I'll give you, or don't, don't do anything wrong, or otherwise I'm gonna give you a muffalata. Okay, that's one of these, all right? Or one of these. Well, what they've done, and this is what the story I've heard, is that during lunchtime, they, the, the Italians would have, they'd do a little cold cuts, a piece of salami, a piece of bread, a piece of cheese, and, few, and a few olives. So what they've done was made a sandwich out of everything. And it came out being called the muffalata. Now there's, there's different variations. Uh, there's a couple of places that do the best, and you know, the inventor of it. But let's, let's make a muffalata sandwich. They also have to contain four kinds of ingredients, all right? Copa, okay, that's the dried pork. Okay, uh, it's like a, uh, a pork butt. This is very hard to make. We tried making this. This, this you better buy it. <laughs> Don't try to make it. The mortadella, this one here. Genoa salami, although you can use the other salami. And Italian provolone. Don't use the American provolone because it's not strong enough, all right? And you need something with pizzazz. And the giardinata, okay? These are pickled vegetables, all right? Very easy. So, to make it, we have to make an olive salad. Now that is so important. This is, I mean, really part of, I mean, this is the guts of the whole thing, is the olives. Now, if you remember what I said, at lunchtime, I mean, I still do this at lunchtime when I'm hungry, I don't know what to eat, or I just want to nibble on something. I'll go and get some olives, a piece of bread, glass of wine and I mean it makes a great snack and it's good for you olives have a lot of nutrition in them a little high in calories and uh, and if some of them are too salty you know what you should do is just soak them okay so you see what I'm you see what I'm doing to take the pits out you give them a, give them a little slap and what I've done is I picked some all all of these olives here Traditionally, they would use uh, the black calamata and the um, and the green brine cured. Okay, so I'm just going to go like this. We're going to make enough for two sandwiches here because that's about as many people we got in the kitchen with us today. Give everybody a taste, and this has to literally drip with olives, with olives and olive oil. Okay. This is a good one. All right. Okay, let's chop this up coarsely. All of these wonderful Mediterranean flavors with tons of flavor. I mean, just spicy and salty and sharp. These are real man sandwiches. Of course, the ladies like them too. Okay, now, you see these? This peppers, this is a garden mix. These are pickled vegetables. And all you wanna do is chop them up. Now, the finer you chop them, the easier it'll be to stay on the bread. 
and this gives a nice crunch. And this has the vinegar in it, so it has that nice, it has that nice kick to it. Now let's see. We also we got to put a little bit of uh, um, celery, and that's fresh celery. And we're adding that because I noticed it has a nice little crunch to it. Now, what would Italian sandwich be without garlic? Garlic. Let's go with some black pepper. And then let's uh, spoon. Let's give it a little olive oil. And this will, we use this as a, as a binder. And you have, now this is some fresh oregano. This is the oregano my Aunt Mary grows for me. And you gotta put a lot of the oregano. I noticed that had a lot of oregano. So when you use oregano, and you get it, you rub it in your hands like this. And what that does is releases the oils. And boy, can you smell that. When we come back, We'll put the sandwich together for you. Okay, let's put the finishing touches on the olive salad. Get a good shot of this one. Now I bet Henry over at Star and Joe and the up in Monta Vista and Sam and you know down in Carmel Valley and all these these uh, are our delis. Take a good look at this one, boys. This is a good, good, good sandwich to have. We're lucky enough to have Henry with us today from Star Market. I'm gonna fix, Henry's gonna get the first piece of this. Now these are those real nice hot pepper. Okay, we're just gonna chop them, throw them in there. That's got that hot oil with it too. And I think I want to give it a little bit more crunch. So let's dice up just a little bit more celery. Like that. Okay. Okay, now we got that. We got my spoon. Let's make sure this all comes together. A little bit more olive oil. And use extra virgin oil. Don't use the garbage. And don't use, don't use anything but olive oil for this. Okay? And of course, Shabika, California. Joe, Gemma, Danny, all the guys, Wally at Shabika's. I want to thank them again for being so nice to us. All that delicious food. And I hope people that go hunting mushrooms over there, you find them. Okay, now let's put this together. Move a lot of sandwich. Now the bread is a little different. That's the only thing that's, you know, I would say is it's, it's a different type of bread. This is pretty close to it. Okay, it's gotta be soft. It can't be that hard, crusty French bread, which is delicious, by the way, which I love, it's my favorite. But for this kind of sandwich, you want to have um, soft crust. Okay, see how soft this is? Okay, now, to go, you gotta go with olives, oil on the bread. Okay, nobody said this was gonna be low calorie. This is good for you. You eat one of these, you'll last, you can last a couple of days. Okay, vinegar, that's right, vinegar. Okay. Now, first we put the copa. Copa like this. Then we put the mortadella. Goes like this. Now, nothing worse than a sandwich that doesn't have enough meat on it or a sandwich that has too much meat on it. That's no good either. You can't load it up too much because the bread has to be, you know, the bread has to be of good quality so that you taste the bread. Okay, see I didn't put too much meat on that, that's enough. And then the provolone. Now the provolone, it's gotta be, I mean, whoa, strong. Okay, here we go. 
Everybody's getting hungry out there, I can see it. Olive, salad. Okay, then you, you go like this. You squash that baby down and you cut that in half. Now remember what I said? This has got to drip olive oil, folks. Otherwise, it's not a good mufalada. We'll put it on this beautiful plate. And we serve that like this. And maybe with a few hot peppers and maybe a few more olives on it, you have got yourself a dish or a lunch that will absolutely make you sit up and dance after you eat this. Okay, this is an absolute one of the best sandwiches in the world. Hope you try it.